Okay, so this week you have an assignment on experimental design. Now, hopefully you watch the PowerPoint or watch the video lecture on the experimental design, scientific inquiry, how is science done, uh, what is doing science and scientific inquiry. But now you have this assignment where you have to understand the scientific method and experimental design and the components to it. So just to start, you want to remember that you have to know the difference between a control group and the experimental group. And I always like to think of it as kind of like uh, with a plant experiment. So if I'm going to have a, a set of plants and I want to know if uh, uh, my new fertilizer is going to help the plants to grow then I'm going to set up an experiment now if I have several fertilizers then I would have to do several experiments or have several groups but um, that's because you only want to change one variable at a time I can't give all of the the uh, fertilizers to one plant and then see if it grows because then I won't know which one worked which one didn't work so you're only changing one variable at a time um, if I wanted to know if water had an influence and fertilizer had an influence, I would have to test them separately because it's only one variable at a time. So with my control group, that's the one that does not get treated. All right, so you could say no fertilizer. And then your experimental group does get the treatment or gets treated so it would be with fertilizer and um you're going to set up your experiment you're going to make sure that you have an, a, a, a hypothesis so you could have your alternative hypothesis And it doesn't necessarily have to be the, the end result or the conclusion or the answer. It doesn't matter if you're right or if you're wrong, but it has to be a statement. Okay, it can't be a I think this or I wonder if or I don't know if. It has to be a statement. So you could say, if I give the plants fertilizer, then they will grow faster all right grow faster grow taller whatever you may may think all right um you could also say if i give plants fertilizers then fertilizer then they won't grow fast whatever it may be you're making a, a statement if and then and then you could have your null hypothesis which is going to say basically there's no effect so you could say, if I give the plants fertilizer, then there will be no effect on growth. All right, and you always remember you only want to change one variable. Everything else will be the same. The type of plant, the type of soil, the amount of soil, the amount of water. The only thing you're changing is the fertilizer. And you're going to want to know what your independent variable is and what your dependent variable is. And I always think about it as if I'm going to set up a graph. Now, at the bottom on the x-axis, I'm always going to put my independent excuse me independent and that's something that i know before i do the experiment and then the y all right that's going to be my dependent and that i do not know all right so that do not know all right so i know i'll have my uh group with no fertilizer and group with fertilizer. I know those before I even start. What I don't know is 
the height that they're going to grow. Okay, I have to collect that data. And then maybe once I collect that data, I have a bar graph where I say, oh, they grew this tall with no fertilizer. They grew this tall with fertilizer. So your independent goes on the X and your dependent goes on the Y. And your dependent, we don't, we don't know what the results are going to be uh, before we start. But with our independent, we know that it's it, we 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 designate the independent. So let's look at the first question from your assignment for the week. We'll do a couple of them together, and then you can go on. Now, some things that you want to keep in mind: any way that you want to make an experiment better is you want a bigger or a larger sample size. You want to do more trials. You want to collect more data. You want to use more people. You want to use more plants. Though that's how you make a experiment even better. Okay, you also it's beneficial to um, uh, make sure that you are um, getting it peer reviewed. You are before you publish anything. You want to make sure that other scientists are going to agree with you. They're going to say, yeah, you know, I looked at the way you did your experiment. You did your experiment well. And it seems like when I repeated it, you remember, you always want it to be repeatable. Well, when I repeated the experiment, it came out the same way. So this is a legitimate study. You want it to be peer reviewed because it helps substantiate your your claims and your conclusions. So first experiment says that head lice are becoming indestructible. A study found that as many as 80 percent of the head lice or of the bugs are now resistant to insecticides and in the over-the-counter shampoos and resistance will only increase. Evolutionary biologist Dale Clayton may have a new line of attack. Clayton, who usually studies lice on bird feathers, stumbled onto this solution after a major research setback. When he moved to his laboratory from England to the University of Utah a, a decade ago, his entire louser lice collection perished in the dry desert air. Soon after, his eight-year-old came home from school with head lice. He wondered if human head lice, right, which maybe it's different from bird feather lice, could also be killed by drying them out. It was sort of a forehead slapper, Clayton says. After conventional hair dryers failed, Clayton came up with the louse buster, a 10-pound device resembling a vacuum cleaner that desiccates or dries out the bugs and kills the bugs with a jet of 140 degree air. It's pretty. It's a pretty brutal assault, says Clayton. Tests show that the invention is both safe and effective, eradicating 80% of live lice and 90, 98% of eggs, leaving survivors unable to breed. And Clayton says it will be awfully hard for lice to develop a resistance to this uh, treatment. So now you have to come up with a hypothesis. And your alternative hypothesis is going to be something like if I use the louse buster, then the lice population will decrease. All right, or you could say the 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 lice will die. Now your null hypothesis is if I use the louse buster, it will have no effect on the lice. Now it says design a control experiment to determine the effect of hot, dry air on head lice. State one way the control group would be treated differently than the experimental group. And what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable? So I would set up an experiment and I would take, uh, I want everything to be the same on both sides. So I would have some lab room that I would set up and I would have my control group. Let's say in my control group, I would make sure I have 100 lice. Okay, 100 lice in my control group. 
and I want everything to be the same except the one thing I'm changing. So in my experimental group, I'm going to have 100 lice as well. And my control group would be treated with no louse buster. My experimental group would get the louse buster. I would use the louse buster on them. Okay, and then I would record my results. And once I recorded my results, maybe I'd set up a graph. And I would have my dependent on the Y, and my dependent is going to be number of survivors. And my independent, what did I know beforehand? Well, I knew that I was going to have my two groups. I'd have my control, and I would have my experimental group. Those are my dependent and my independent variable. So my independent variable is the groups and my dependent variable is going to be number of survivors or number of deaths, you could say. All right, and then maybe after my experiment, I would see that a hey, number of survivors for the control was very high and number of survivors in my experimental group was very low. Okay, so in your answer, you want to include how you would set up your experiment, how you would test it, what's your control group, your experimental group, independent variable, and your dependent variable. Let's move on to the next one. All right, Daphnia are little freshwater organisms, sometimes referred to as water fleas. You're going to design an experiment that could be used to test the effects of temperature on the size of the population, the Daphnia population. In your experimental design, be sure to describe how the control group will be treated differently than the experimental group, state the alternative hypothesis and the null hypothesis, and state the dependent variable and the independent variable. So I could say that, well, my alternative hypothesis is that and you could say if I increase temperature, if I decrease temperature, you go either way. And then you could say Daphnia uh, population will go up or Daphnia population will go down. Either way, you could say temperature goes up, population goes up. Or temperature goes up, population goes down. Or you could say temperature goes down, population goes up. Or temperature goes down, population goes down. However you want it, whatever you want to come up with. So you could, I could say um, if I increase... The temperature, then the population will increase. Okay, my null hypothesis would be if I increase the temperature then there would be no effect on the population size So now how am I going to set up my experiment? Well, I would take, I would come up with different temperatures. So say that 68 degrees is normal uh, pond temperature that these freshwater organisms live in. So 68 degrees is normal. Well, then I'm going to want to set up different groups of temperatures, all right? And I'm gonna maybe wanna do 48 degrees and wanna do 58 degrees, and then I wanna go on the other side and do 78, and I wanna do 88 degrees, okay? So right there, you have these different temperatures. If this is normal, we could say this is my control, and these would be my experimental groups, okay? So 
Uh, how's your control going to be treated differently from the experimental? Well, your control is not going to have a change in temperature. We're just going to take regular pond water and leave it at the temperature that it normally is. But in my experimental group, I'm going to change the temperature. That is the one variable that I am changing. Okay. Now, once I collect my data, all right, I'm going to set up my x axis and my y axis. Well, what's going to be my independent? That's going to be the temperatures because I know that before I even start my experiment. I know I'm the one that decided I want to do 48, 58, 68, 78, 88. What I don't know is the effect it's going to have on the population. All right, so population size is going to be my dependent variable on the y axis. So keep these things in mind. All right, try the rest. You can email me if you have questions, but really try to think about these. These are questions that you can see on the next exam. You could see on the final exam. You're going to want to know how to answer them. So um, do the best you can. Remember, increasing the sample size is going to make your, your, um, your experiment uh, even better. All right. If I, if I took a hundred uh, water fleas or 100 daphnia for this. Maybe if I want to make it better, I do 200. I do 1,000 water fleas. That's going to increase my sample size, make for a better experiment. All right, you also, if you're going to try to publish your findings, if you're going to try to really present your findings to the world, you think it's a break, it's breakthrough, you're going to want it to be um, peer-reviewed so that uh, you know your peers can agree with you and it really substantiates your claims. So, um, Work on this the best you can, and, and I have faith that you can do it. Use this video, and then you can rewind it and, and try to look back and try to figure out, you know, what is my alternative hypothesis, my null hypothesis, um, your dependent var variable, independent variable, your control group, your experimental group for each one of your questions.